Thank you for uh, joining this session. Um, today I'd like to speak about uh, your office migrations uh, and the power of um, open standards. Uh, so um, the agenda for today is um, a few words about me. Uh, we will go through some considerations uh, on the office migrations. Um, the goal of this uh, topic is that we can go through um, some of the entities that we can acquire, like um, public administrations, government and, and enterprises, um, in order to bring uh, more people or entities to, to use uh, your office. Um, to do so, we will uh, explore some of the proprietary software struggles um, uh, and also uh, check open document um, format as um, some of its features uh, and what makes it a true open standard. Um, and in order to reach our goal, uh, I've, I identified uh, some of the channels which can uh, take us there and that can be done through marketing, outreach and through uh, local communities. So uh, a few words about me. I am a TDF member. I am based in Tirana and a member of Open Labs uh, Hackerspace, uh, which is a local community which promotes um, free and open source software and through which I got in touch with the uh, LibreOffice community as well. Uh, currently, uh, I'm working for the city of Tirana, um, which uh, last year went through a migration uh, to LibreOffice and during that time I've learned a lot through that process. Uh, and I have a background on uh, business informatics and uh, information security. Uh, so, some considerations on LibreOffice migrations. Um, if we go at the Document Foundation Wiki, at the link uh, shown above, we get like a um, detailed histor historical of various uh, successful uh, LibreOffice migrations. Um, some of them are also illustrated in this map, um, there are even more. Uh, but uh, this map shows the diversity to which various entities from like different countries and different cultures have been able to successfully deploy or even migrate to, to LibreOffice. Um, each, mi each migration or uh, deployment has its own unique history, but there are a few things um, to consider which connect all of these stories. Um, so, in any case, like when uh, an institution or government or company uh, decides to go through uh, migration, there are a few problems which this entity is facing uh, and uh, they have found the solution to these problems through LibreOffice. Re so this gets us to the question, um, why would an institution or company migrate to LibreOffice? Um, as I mentioned, uh, usually it's because they are facing um, some problems with uh, the, their current situation. Uh, in most of the cases they are using uh, proprietary software such as Microsoft Office in this case, which is like the most popular one. Uh, and some of these struggles, I've just mentioned a few in this slide, uh, are related to uh, license and maintenance fee, which takes them to unpredictable costs. Uh, they end up uh, facing vendor locking uh, issues, uh, security issues, uh, lack of interoperability, uh, lost investments, um, because um, after uh, a, a license has expired, you just need to remake the, the investment from the beginning. Uh, and this can be especially critical in the case of um, public institutions which are spending uh, public money to acquire these licenses. Uh, and of course the code is not auditable either, which takes us back to the security issues, because it's always the same group of people who are like 
working to improve the code, uh, but also um, it might cause as well like privacy issues because uh, you don't know like the source code, so you don't really know where your information or the content of your um, document is going. Uh, and again, this is um, also very critical, uh, especially in the case of uh, public institutions, which have a lot of uh, citizen data. Uh, okay, so uh, we checked all of these um, all of these problems with the better software, um, but um, in case that us as like LibreOffice contributors would like to would like to um, watch more case studies where people uh, or companies or uh, organizations, institutions or even our governments are using LibreOffice, then um, it's important for us um, to, to do our part in order to see this happen. Uh, and in order to do so, uh, we need to like identify and be very aware of um, some of the strongest points that uh, LibreOffice is a free software solution for, for document editing has. Uh, again, I've mentioned, um, there is like a lot of, to explore, but I've mentioned a few here. Uh, LibreOffice adopts the ISO standard, which is an uh, open uh, document uh, format. LibreOffice reads and writes several Microsoft proprietary file formats, uh, which makes it easier to, to convert the files. LibreOffice allows to, to save documents in a he hybrid PDF format, which makes them editable even after saving them. LibreOffice installs uh, only free fonts, which makes interoperability more, more uh, possible. Um, uh, LibreOffice provides um, uh, companies with a solution which would avoid vendor locking uh, because it's free software. Mm -hmm. uh, it can reduce costs at considerable amount, especially for uh, very big institutions which have like thousands of workstations. Um, it, it can have like a very impactful uh, uh, reduce of their of their budgeting um, and also a uh, LibreOffice is free software uh, which guarantees that uh, business secrets or sensitive data in the case of institutions are actually kept secret um, which we can't confirm uh, what happens in the case of uh, proprietary software okay so um, if us as contributors would like to do our part in, in, in able to, to see more uh, successful LibreOffice implementations, um, deployment or migrations, I believe that um, as uh, community members, we all, by doing a little bit, we m might make um, an impactful change. Um, for example, if we use uh, our uh, connections or um, our communities, uh, we might be able to, to share our knowledge or, or our know-how in, in able to, to make uh, people understand which are the, the problems with proprietary software and how a platform like LibreOffice would solve them. To do so, we need to identify which are our target groups and, of course, um, depending on like where we work or with uh, which people we interact, we might, everyone might do, might do its part. Our target groups in this case would be like uh, public administration, governments, enterprises, uh, universities, institutions, and in some cases, why not even individuals? If we get like a, only a family member to start using a LibreOffice, that's still a little change. Uh, among other things, uh, the true power of uh, LibreOffice stands in the fact that it uses a true open standard, which is open uh, document format. Uh, here I've gathered some of the features of this format, um, but there is like a lot more to explore and in the resources um, page, which is um, another, in another slide. 
for those who want to dig a little deeper, I've added a resource uh, there. Uh, so ODF is the default format for all Office documents. Um, it is the broadest uh, support of all formats within the industry, it means that documents are truly portable. ODF offers equal support for all international scripts. Uh, the documents are smaller in size than their legacy equivalents, which saves up to 75% uh, of disk space and bandwidth, which in some cases might be, might be quite impactful, depending uh, on the institutions, how much uh, information, how much documents they save, how big their documents are, etc. Um, content as well as media objects such as images, movies, etc. are directly accessible and easy to work with from outside any office application. The simple uh, XML syntax is human readable and easy to understand and program. ODF is secure, uh, it's a lightweight structure, uh, makes it easier than ever to enforce even the strictest in the security policies. Uh, and last but not least, ODF pays uh, a lot of attention to accessibility uh, for people with disabilities. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a lot more to say, but um, uh, by, by knowing uh, some of the main features of this format, uh, this can empower us to, to win an argument during a discussion uh, where we are trying to convince someone um, that LibreOffice is the right way to go. Um, and because of all of these uh, uh, arguments here, uh, might, might be on our side in this case. Uh, so, um, uh, until this point, we have like ad identified our target groups. We know which problems they are facing with the library software. We know that LibreOffice can be a problem solver in this case because it has all of these features. Uh, but what more can we do uh, in order to make uh, our voice be a little more heard? Um, one way to do so is by sharing our success stories. Uh, if, if there is like some case where you, um, where a student, for example, convinced their um, university to organize a LibreOffice workshop or a school to teach um, children to, to make some basic editing, uh, those are nice stories to share which can encourage people to, to do the same thing uh, in their local communities. Uh, and of course, failures are also important to share uh, because that's a way of learning too. So maybe simply writing a blog post or writing on a forum uh, on your experiences uh, might be very encouraging for others as well. Um, uh, another question we might uh, ask is that is your company, uh, the company you're working for or the university where you're studying, is it using LibreOffice? Um, and if not, um, why don't you give it a try and suggest them to do so by, um, by showing um, what we went through, like um, the problems uh, they would face with proprietary software uh, and uh, by making some strong arguments on how LibreOffice uh, could solve them. Uh, as community members, uh, it's very uh, important uh, in these terms in order to, to make possible more migrations or successful uh, deployments to work on documentation. Uh, because it makes it uh, much easier for people who are not that much into this, uh, people who are not part of the community or, ho or who do not know LibreOffice that well as we do. So by sharing, by, by documenting our knowledge, we are also empowering them to, to keep on uh, with their work with the migration and of course um, Localizations as well are very um, productive um, in this case because they sort of cre create a connection between 
uh, people from a country and um, and the fact that they have it in their own language might empower them to, to use the, uh, the software as well. Um, and of course, we should like try to get everyone involved. There is space for everyone. Um, depend, no matter of their skills, they can still um, do something to uh, to improve the project. Um, and uh, one of the main uh, resources which can bring uh, more successful cases of migrations, I think that are also local communities, uh, because uh, it's easier for local contributors to, to approach institution or even their governments uh, at, the, at the place they live, because um, things were different in different countries and culture, so people who are part of that um, are um, have like more know-how on how, how to approach individuals or, or institutions. Um, here are some of the resources that I mentioned on the slide, and thank you for your attention. Um, I think we do have uh, a lot of minutes left, so in case you have some questions or even some like short story to share, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. So, no questions, no stories. How many people in, you say, you're from Albania, right? Start uh, using like LibreOffice. Do you know? Like, is there a lot of people now? Uh, yes, I think there are a lot. Uh, in terms of individuals, I cannot like confirm the numbers, but uh, our community has been quite active uh, during at least the, the last three years uh, with organizing events. Um, and uh, also uh, the fact that we had the LibreOffice conference there last year um, had like uh, a big local impact, so um, more people like have shown an uh, interest in the platform. Uh, of course, the city of Tirana uh, now is is using LibreOffice uh, as well. Uh, currently, with uh, 800 workstations. Um, and um, there are some cases which are not documented, but through conversations during the, our events, we also know uh, small companies, uh, mostly uh, Italian companies or call centers, who who use uh, uh, LibreOffice for for document editing. So I can say that there are a few. Thank you. So why didn't you mention that you were the first one in Albania that was certified for a creation project? Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, migrations, um, like the certification process is also um, uh, quite encouraging in these terms because you learn a lot and uh, uh, people get some sort of recognition for what they know, so that's also very encouraging. Okay, thank you for your attention. Oh, we have another question. Uh, can you share the obstacle of the recent process in Albania? The obstacles? Obstacles? Yes, like problems, like problems or something. But, uh, yeah. So we need to aware that we have some interesting issues. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Um, well, from what I've also read, uh, it's like the common problem with migrations, which is like uh, resistance to change. People, especially in public administrations, where they might be like doing the same stuff over uh, over and over again for like 20 years or something. Uh, do not um, uh, easily accept change. So uh, going from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice, um, of course, would make um, would, like scare them a lot, <laughs> or um, make it sound like uh, terrifying. Uh, but um, yeah, 
we we went through a lot of consultation and support also from Italo, uh, and uh, we like went through the uh, steps of the migration protocol before um, doing the migration. We let people know that this change would happen. Uh, and in the first month, uh, they also used both like uh, LibreOffice and Microsoft Office at the same time. So they have uh, some time to get used to the platform. Um, of course, there were complaints like during the whole year, but um, at some point, like they got used to it. They were like um, could do could perform uh, the same tasks as they used to with Microsoft Office. So now things are like more going more smoothly. Are there any other cities now in, in Albania who plan to migrate by the road model of, of Tirana? Um, we are, um, like, our community is trying to uh, do, like, have the same approach uh, probably on the governmental level, but I cannot confirm anything yet. How good uh, stuff will happen. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you for your attention then. <laughs>